Hi, this is Grace Pamela with Summerata.com, and this is the preview and tutorial for the Summerata Eye Essentials Action Collection. This is the same exact thing for both Photoshop and Photoshop Elements, so don't worry if you are following along and you are working in PS Elements. It's basically the very exact same thing. Uh, so here we have in our action panel, we have Don't Be Late Eye Essentials, and this will just give you a quick run through of some of these actions, the very basics of what you would need. And then down here you have individual actions that are more detailed, like the goodbye under eye circles and the goodbye wrinkles. Those are not included in there just because they take more detailed work. And then if you go further down you have tools. You have uh, zoom in, zoom out, fit on screen, resizing and sharpening, all that fun stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start um, the Don't Be Late Eye Essentials action. Press play. Okay, next we have to choose the color that we want under our eyes. This is lightening the under eye circles. So I'm just going to choose a light color, press OK. And then make sure you have a soft white brush. Just make sure it's white, and then you're going to be painting on the black layer mask. Go ahead and paint right under. This is just going to lighten it up a little bit. Now we have the luminous eyes. Bring this out a little bit so you can see it. And this will brighten your eyes. And then we have awakening. Make your paintbrush nice and big. And this swipe over the whole eye. And that can kind of even things out if you have one eye darker than the other. Or else you can just go ahead and do both. Or you can run the action again and then run it over the darker eye one more time. Then we have whiten eyes. If you think something looks too exaggerated, every image is different, so it's going to need different levels of everything. So if you think something is too exaggerated and it makes your image look fake, always, always fit on screen and take a look at it from afar. This way you can see the whole picture. If you need to, you can even zoom out even more just so you can see if it looks too bad. Now this does look a little too white, so I'm going to go up here on this layer and adjust the opacity so it looks a little more realistic. I would suggest always working with 100% opacity brush and then only adjusting the opacity of the layer. It's a lot more accurate that way. Okay, so I'm going to go in and zoom in again. I'm going to go to boost eye color. Again, you can adjust the opacity. Boost fill light. It adds more light. And again, adjust the opacity. You can see the rest of the image looks perfectly fine, but the eyes are very dark. So a lot of times, just adding light alone to your eyes can make a huge difference. So that's why a lot of the actions are based on adding more light. And then here it says boost catch lights, but this image does not have any catch lights. We will be adding that later. Define eyebrows. Darken eye details. This is for any eyelashes, any like eyeshadow, your pupils, around the outside of your eyes eyeliner. You can zoom in even more and get the individual eyelashes if you'd like to make those darker. And then reduce glare from glasses. Sometimes you have a subject with glasses and that will help. Okay, so we have that. Now I'm going to go down and create some custom catch lights. And if you don't catch anything in this video tutorial, there are little notes in each action to help you along as well. Now I'm not going to want a soft catch light, so I'm going to go and get a hard brush. And I'm just going to add in a little catch light. You want to look at where your subject is. You know, she's outside, so you're going to want like a circle, like a sun. If she's inside with studio light, you might want a rectangle or a square. And again, you can adjust the opacity. So you can see the difference there. 
it just adds a little more light to your eyes. And then I'm gonna go to now you can boost cat's lights if you wanted to make them brighter. I'm gonna go to Iris Pop. And we'll go get a soft brush again. And adjust the opacity so it looks more realistic. And then I'm going to go to Open Shadows. This is adding in more light. You can also run this on your under eye circles if you have any. Maybe under the eyebrows. There you go. Just adds a little more light. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Goodbye Veins and Debris. I'm going to press play. Just press enter on your keyboard to make the messages go by faster once you get used to them or know what you're doing. Okay, so for this one, you have the work on this layer only. So you're only going to be working on the gray layer here. And you want to make sure that your healing brush is selected. It should already select it for you. But just in case, I want you to make sure you click the healing brush and make sure you have it selected. You also want to make sure it's on current layer. So that means it's only working on this layer. And then you can go ahead and zoom in. And you want to get rid of any debris or veins on the eye or on the skin. So as you're going along, you want to press Alt on your keyboard and then select. So it's just like the cloning tool and you want to choose different areas of either the eye or the skin to select from. So if, it's choose, if you're working on the eye, you want to choose an area that's nice and white to get rid of your veins. If you're working on the skin, you want to choose an area of skin that has a lot of texture. That will keep it more realistic looking. So you want to choose, you don't want to choose a washed out area like right here, a blown out area, and you don't want to choose a spot that has a bunch of um, freckles or hair or anything like that. You want to choose an area that has a lot of texture. So I would probably choose right here, maybe even sometimes the forehead. You can get loose stray hairs here from like the eyebrows. You can get dirt from makeup all kinds of things. So just press Alt and then paint over it. And I'm just going along pressing Alt on my keyboard as I go. Getting anything that sticks out. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Goodbye Wrinkles. And this is the same exact thing, only we are working on the wrinkles. Now, you can either select a big patch, again, choose a textured area, and just do one swipe, and then you can adjust the opacity of the group layer. So anytime you want, you're working with these uh, group layers here you want to choose you want to change the opacity for the entire group 
So, 100%. From far away, it doesn't look uh, too bad. You always want to look at it from far away. So it doesn't look horrible, but sometimes it might look too fake. So you want to adjust the opacity to where you want it to be. Now that is with the big brush. So I'm not going to do that because I prefer to do small brushes because that looks even more realistic. So you want to choose a small brush and choose from an area with texture and just go over your wrinkles. go to the group layer here and then you can adjust the opacity of how severe or unsevere you want it to look. There you go. And then also if you make a mistake, let's say you don't like this area, you want it back, click the white layer mask, choose a soft paintbrush, make sure it's black, and you can just paint that right back in. Everything that you just did, you can paint it right back in. So here's the before and after. Make it a little more realistic. And then you can do the same exact thing for goodbye under circles. You can lighten them more, the first action that we did. You can lighten around eyes. I like to do this one for, I like to highlight under eyes, I'm going to choose a light patch of skin around her eyes. And I like to just kind of go in the arch. When you highlight the area under the eyebrows, it gives more light to your overall eyes. So that's why I focus a lot on the eyebrows as well as the eyes. So it adds more light. And then just any highlights that you see of the eye, you can go ahead and highlight that. It also adds, makes your eyes look bigger and pop more when you add light on the inner part of your eyes. And then also the rim. Sometimes I like to do the bridge of the nose here. So that way it adds more contour to the nose, which also adds to the effect of the eyes. You can also do eye blast sharpening, sharpen your eyes, and enhance eye size. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this after I do the eye sparkle, just so I can show you really quick. If this happens, it's just telling you that it can't make a history snapshot because it was already made. So just press continue. For PSE users, that does not apply to you since you do not have history of snapshots. But I like to keep snapshots as we go along for PS users. So if you ever make a mistake and you don't like the effects, you can just go back one step and go back another step. So we have extra eye sparkle, and this just adds even more sparkle to your eyes. Okay, so now I'm going to go to enhance eye size. This you need to do one eye at a time for it to work. So if you wanted to enhance both eyes and make them pop a little bit bigger, just run the action twice. If you want to just do one eye, if you see this eye is smaller than this eye, so if you want to do one eye, that's fine. So you enhance eye size, this will do it automatically for you. And this one will tell you to stop make sure you actually press stop after you read the instructions. So what happens is I'm going to press stop and press L. 
and this will choose the lasso tool for me. So after you have your lasso tool selected, go ahead and just trace around the eye. It does not have to be perfect. And then press play again. Okay, now we have enhanced our eye size. And you want to choose a soft black paintbrush, paint in the layer mask, and then just erase the hard edges. You can also set the opacity at 46%, just so you can blend it in a little more. I'm going to go ahead and fit on screen so you can see. Now it makes the eye a little bigger, and you can do this to even eyes out. Um, hers looks just fine like this, but I just wanted to show you an example. Enhance custom size. This will take you to the free transform. Actually, I'll show you that really quick. Press continue, 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 stop. Press L for lasso. Again, just trace over the eye. Press play, continue. And this one, what you want to do, you can either hold the shift key and drag it, or you can select the link here and then just enter 102% or maybe you want 6% or 1%. You can choose the size yourself. That's basically all that one does. Let me choose 3. Press continue. Again, just go over the hard edges. And there you go. That's how you do that. And that is how you run all of your actions. It's very simple, so I hope you like it. This was just a really quick run through, but here is the before and after of that image. The eyes are brighter, more colorful, perfect for portraits. So I hope you like the tutorial, and I hope you like your new collection. And thank you for watching.